<laughs> you have a See if it works. Yeah, you're you're doing great. <laughs> I was gonna stab something with the thing. I was gonna do ninja moves with with a mini whisk. <laughs> With it a mini fell, I had to take the mask off. That's a fail. That's a complete fail. We should just stop the show. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. Okay, we're back. Keaton's in the kitchen. Biggest show ever. Notice I am not wearing the KFTK shirt. First time ever. Byron with her big win today. Sunday, Champions League final, three o'clock. Be there, be square. Byron versus PSG, Lewandowski, got the gold today, got one of them, Serge Gnabry with the other two. Honey Baby got me this jersey, not this past Christmas, the one before. Was it for Christmas? Okay. Yeah, it's for Christmas. I know, uh, I bought it. So, anyway, today only, you won't see me in the orange KFTK, I'm styling the colors, representing, this is probably going to make it all the way back to Robert Lewandowski, <laughs> he's probably going to call us to do a show in Germany. As soon as they open the borders and they let Americans back in Europe, we're going to Bayern. We're going to Munich. We can't go to Bayern because that's not a place. We're going to Munich. We're probably going to Lewandowski's house and we're doing a show in Lewandowski's house. And this is why I love you because you're an optimistic dreamer. So if anyone knows Robert <laughs> Lewandowski personally, <laughs> you can please share this and then get us an invite. We'll go. We'll do a show. We'll bake kielbasa and kraut and tons of German specialties. We'll make uh, currywurst, which is one of the national foods of Germany. I haven't know this because I know a German girl. Are you um, planning a menu? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. That's we're, part of your we're gonna go there. Dream. If we're going to go there, we got to make stuff. If you're in Rome, you do as the Romans. So anyway, somebody work on uh, getting us into Robert Lewandowski's house. Can they see the name? You I'm think? sure, honey, yes. Because they won today Champions League Finals. So this is the Champions League Finals show. Biggest show ever. Chicken Alfredo. I was going to say Parmesan. Chicken Alfredo. Some people like <laughs> call it afraid of. No, They call you. it Chicken Alfredo. Yes, that's you. I'm not saying who, Honey Baby, uh, does that. But uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, you can make Chicken Alfredo. This is super simple. Yes, it it's is. so darn delicious. Let's get right to it because it's a big show. He's not excited or anything, is he? <laughs> okay, so we're going to start with Honey Baby getting the chicken ready. The great thing about this recipe while she's doing this, I'll tell you, is if, if you come home at night and you just want to do this really quick, you can do this chicken whole. You can do it in just a big piece. Okay. Um, you don't have to cut it up. It's going to cook a little faster if you do cut it up. The smaller you cut it up, the faster it's going to cook. Right. So, take it away, honey baby. So, just <laughs> chunk in this chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm doing. Let's Better than choking. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, you're honorary. <laughs> chicken we did and it was really good too by the way That's if you nice. haven't made that pesto chicken spaghetti squash man that should be on your radar because that was really good it was very tasty now you're very cutting very this good. into roughly one inch cube yeah one one and a half inch somewhere in there i'm not being precise but we've got chicken thighs by the way i sean and i both prefer chicken thighs oh yeah way better than breasts and they're cheaper Kroger had them the other day. By the way, I shouldn't drop this tip until we go to Kroger and Rome buy a bunch. Uh, they had them for 99 cents a pound. They had the big packs of boneless thighs for 93 cents, dollar fifty three, dollar seventeen. <laughs> so anyway, it's super cheap and it's way more flavor. Way more flavor, you know. Obviously, more fat. You know, fat is where the flavor's at. 
But, uh, you know, if you're watching, if you want more flavor and you want to kind of watch the price on things, chicken thighs is where it's at. You can always get them on sale. They run them, they run them on sale pretty Pretty yeah, even at regular price, you're like a buck ninety nine or two ninety nine right. or somewhere. Breasts are about four ninety nine. Yeah. So for all of these dishes with the chicken, I mean, last week we did breast, but we prefer chicken thighs, both of us. All right, I'm almost and, done here. And then you can do, by the way, real quick, if you buy the large packs, take yes. out whatever you're going to use, put the rest in plastic wrap. Lay it on a big long piece of plastic wrap, roll it up real good, seal it up, and put that in a Ziploc bag, freeze it, it stays good forever. I shouldn't really say forever because somebody will do it forever and then they'll get poisoned by it. But literally, we have had them in our freezer for a year. Wrapped in plastic wrap and then put in a freezer bag. So this is like my new favorite seasoning, basil, oregano, garlic, and sea salt. We got it at Kroger, right? Yep. It's McCormick. So once again, kind of talk, and if you don't want to do this part, you don't have to. I would go ahead and put a little bit of salt and pepper on it just to kind of flavor it up a bit. But uh, we talked a little bit last week about flavoring at every level. Okay, so I'm just going to, now I'm going to massage the chicken, honey. Put a little more on there. I have honey. nothing to add to that. <laughs> seems to be add going little, so yeah. well. Add a little more seasoning to this for me, would you please? I got nasty fingers. Okay, that's good. And stop. <laughs> Jimmy does the best. Oh, God. Okay, so that's good. Let me wash my hands. We've got the pan on. I always forget to turn the pan on. And also, we already have some water that's heating up, uh, boiling, whatever. Go ahead and get your water going, too. Yeah, that's what um, just said. Yeah, that. we forgot to mention that, but it's water boiling. So go ahead and get that going, too. All right. So we're going to put a little bit of olive oil down in our pan. And I mean, we're just basically browning. Did this you add chicken. a little bit of that to your water for your pasta? No, but I will. Okay. So, pan boiling. Just a splash of oil to your water. And you, wow. <laughs> I'm wound up, honey. It was you are wound up tonight. semi paddles. Don't you come at me. I got a mini whisk. <laughs> and I'm not afraid to use it. All right. Let me bring that over so everyone can see. Okay. Just do a little stir there. You know that's hot because you can see the shine on it. Pick that arm up a little bit. You're blocking me. Sorry. That's all right. So let's spread this out. Okay. Because the one thing about when you cut chicken into cubes is that you kind of risk the chance of it steaming more than cooking and you want to still get a you know a decent amount of color on there so try to spread it out as much as possible yeah otherwise it just sits in there and it swamps and it doesn't ever get any real color to it so correct okay so you got your water boiling and then water's boiling Real's i added on it. yes i added oil and salt I added oil for the simple fact that I'm cooking gluten-free fettuccine, which, by the way, is pretty flipping awesome that we found the fettuccine that's mm -hmm. gluten-free. And dollar twenty-nine yeah. bargain bin. Hello. If I was just doing normal pasta, I would just put salt in it. No real oil necessary. Oops, about to fall over with the camera. All right. Put your pasta down in there. I always break mine in half. Because, you know, it's like romantic to sit there and swirl your fork with your pasta. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also a slight bit annoying. So, all right. We got the pasta in. We got the chicken going. I turned my heat. Oop, I turned it down. Turn my heat up a little bit. I want that to cook a little faster. Okay, I just swung the camera around everywhere. So that means we're good to go on this. So while it's going, I did put on the thing that we would serve this with the salad. Of course, you always get a little bit more when it comes to kittens in the kitchen. And today, you're going to get a lot more because that's the way we do things. Sarah has a ton of goodies from our garden. Okay, so, she, so what's from the garden? We've got both cucumbers are from the garden. This is a ghost, which they're cute and fun. Mm -hmm. 
They look a whole lot different than a normal cucumber, but they taste exactly like a cucumber. Oh, and they're green on the inside, and they're delicious. Yeah. They're called white wonders, I think, but we call them ghosties. We call them ghosties. Got some tomatoes. And what? The Pickled beets. beets. Are Lots of goodies from the garden. Mm -hmm. Yep, I think that's it. Okay. So I'm just going to start chopping vegetables, nothing fancy here. You're going to make dressing, correct? Yes. Now, we're going to make the sauce for the afraid of at the very end because it doesn't sit very well for very long. You need to make that sauce, you need to eat it. So, again, with us, you always get a little something extra. And tonight, we're going to give you something extra that everyone loves. It's like the number one thing ever in the history of the world. What I have here is some chives. If you have dried chives, just use those. If you don't have chives, don't worry about it. This just adds a nice color to this dressing. I'm, I'm trying to draw this out to build a... What's suspense. The yeah, build the suspense. We're going to make some homemade branch dressing. Everyone loves branch dressing, and especially their kids. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to make, and it's super delicious. So that's just some chives, roughly chopped, no biggie. It's basically the only thing that we have to cut with this thing, so I hope you enjoyed that part of it. Um, I have a bowl. Then I have sour cream. Now when you're making ranch, the real thing to keep in mind here is that the three, what I consider to be sort of wet ingredients, all need to be in there in roughly the same amounts. So if it's half, 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 quarter, 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 however big a batch you're making, just try and keep in mind these three things in equal amounts. So what I've got is mayo, sour cream, and don't worry, it's okay if you put a little sour cream in your mayo container. Mm -hmm. No one minds. And again, I'm just trying to roughly get the same amount. Um, it tends to be a little, a little one way or the other if you don't get this roughly the same. So just trying to get about the same amount of each one of these three, and this is buttermilk. Can you make ranch without buttermilk? Absolutely. It tastes better, and it's going to taste more like what you're used to having if you have a little buttermilk. So again, if I had a quarter of a cup of sour cream or a half a cup, then that's roughly a half a cup of mayo and half a cup of buttermilk. Then, all we're going to do from here is dill. Um, you could use fresh dill. This is going to be roughly about a half a teaspoon, give or take. Garlic powder, same thing. You want about a half a teaspoon so it has a lot of flavor. Onion powder, same thing. That's the great thing about making homemade ranch is it's super easy to keep up with because it's the same amount of dry ingredients, all of them and the same amount of wet ingredient. So then I have my chives that I just chopped up, which I honestly don't add a whole lot other than kind of some beautiful color. Um, no, I add a little bit of onion flavor to it, but your onion powder is where most of that's coming from. So we've got that. Then we have somewhere here some salt and pepper. Again, Sarah and I don't overly salt and pepper our stuff um, rarely do we put... We leave that up to a line. Right. That's exactly right. Engage. Engage. Yeah, and Meemaw. Meemaw and does Meemaw. that too. She yeah. loves the salt too. So we'll put a little bit of that in here. Um, more pepper than salt just because I'd rather have the flavor than I would the salt. Look at that. That's beautiful. It is good. Go see. Now, I've got my fork here. And I set it to the side. So all this was was sour cream, mayo, buttermilk, onion powder, dill weed, garlic powder, salt and pepper. Now, here's the real key. So you stir that up until it's nice and creamy. You need a little bit of some kind of citrus. Um, lemon juice, lime juice. Um, in a pinch, I've made it with orange juice. It tends to be a little sweet. Huh. So I'm gonna give this a splash of lime juice because we don't have lemon. I would have used lemon, but we don't. That's a teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon and a half. Give that a good stir. And basically, that's it. You'll want to adjust your salt and pepper 
if you're using Drad Deal, now again, this recipe is not on there, so you'll have to somehow bookmark this video, uh, or just put it up here, because it's so easy to do. Just a homemade ranch, sour cream, buttermilk, mayo, a citrus juice of some kind, garlic powder, onion powder, salt, pepper, dill. That's it. Um, give that a little stir, and trust me, this is as good as you get in the jar. If you're one of those that says, I love Hidden Valley Ranch, well, trust me, you're going to love this. It's going to be better tomorrow and the day after that. That was the point I was going to make a minute ago. Thank you. Yeah. Is that this dressing, especially if you're using dried ingredients, dried herbs, it's better the longer you let it sit. Now, here's your other tip. You always get so much with this show. You get everything with this show. Anyway. If you want to change your up, uh, well, I've got this stuff everywhere. If you want to change it up, add a little bit of cilantro to it and have a Southwest style. Uh -oh. um, add chipotle powder or chipotle, the, the adobo sauce off of it. Yeah. Add hot sauce and make a spicy ranch. Add barbecue sauce and make a barbecue ranch. Hey! Nice. Could you smush up some avocado? You could smush avocado. up avocados and make an avocado ring. Ultimate combination of raising beauty. <laughs> um, and that's how simple this is. Now watch this. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. That's all. That's how easy it's ranch is. Ranch. Mm. That doesn't need a more salt. No, and we don't know what salt is. But that's all it is. That is so easy to do. It's so delicious. To go over a beautiful style. Mmm. Okay. So I'm going to put that in the fridge. So we need it here in a few. Again, save this video because you want to go back and do that. If you're doing chicken tenders, we got to make some chicken tenders some night. Because we do some with Parmesan that are really, really good. You can make this ranch dip for a dipping sauce. A ranch. You can add some other goodies to it um, to sort of change that around a little bit. That makes the perfect dipping sauce for those chicken tender. And kids love chicken tenders. We gotta do a yeah. we gotta do a kitty episode. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. It just hit me. It just came out. I didn't plan that. <laughs> it just came out of the blue. All right. So the first thing we're gonna do. Whoa, she's slinging beets. The first thing we're gonna do for our afraid of. And I've taken to calling it that because that's what any baby calls it. <laughs> is we're going to cut this onion up. Now, most times on most of our episodes, you ever watch, Sarah and I rarely spend a whole lot of time on stuff like this. Just chopping things, one of those things that, that people put a lot of time into and they don't see a whole lot of end results out of it and they're spending a lot of time. And so, oh, I don't like cooking because it takes too long, blah, blah, blah. This is the, so we use it on it. We're just like, heck with it. Roughly chop it and go, and it's delicious. This is one of the few recipes where when I'm chopping this onion, I want this really fine. I want my Alfredo. I've gotten so much saying afraid of. Now I can't even say Alfredo. <laughs> that I want the flavor to be in the sauce and not in the fact that I'm putting onions in. This is only aiding the flavor. I don't want this to be the star of the show. I want the chicken to shine. I want the sauce to shine. So I spent a lot of time and I cut these really, really, really thinly. That's about a sixteenth of an inch to an eighth of an inch. And almost across the board, these are all roughly that same thickness. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pull the chicken out. Okay, she's taking the chicken out. And we're going to use that same pan in just a minute for our sauce. So again, I cut these real super thin, and then I'm coming here and I'm chopping them really thin. I want the flavor, but I do not want big chunks of onions in here overpowering my sauce and my chicken. Uh-oh, not good. So give it a little chop, put both your hands on top of your, your knife, go across that board, come back across it at 90 to it so you get all that chopped up real nice. You got a couple of big pieces, just sort of check those. That way you don't spend a ton of time doing that. All right, so Sarah's got her skillet. Is that handle really hot? Okay. Now there's a little bit of chicken fat and oil left in this skillet. 
What I'm going to do is take a little of this out because I don't quite need that much. So I'm going to get a paper towel and I'm going to put it down. Be really careful if you're doing this, by the way, because it will burn you. Oh, yeah. I'm going to take out some of this. I want some of it in there, but I don't want it swimming in oil. I'm getting out of your way. So we got our little thing over here where we throw all of our strips. So now I'm left with maybe a teaspoon of oil. I'm going to put this onion into here. I'm going to get all that in there like that. I don't really do it. Okay, so I'm going to put this back over the heat. And I'm going to spread this onion out real nice and thin. Using the same spoon that Sarah used. Now, just in a minute when this gets going, if you would bring that camera over. Sure. So I'm going to spread this onion out real thin so it'll go ahead and cook up. And they'll be able to see about how much oil I've got in here. And this is the time when you look through and if you see, if you see any big pieces of onion, go ahead and break those up into smaller pieces. So I've got this on about medium heat. I do not want to brown these up because onions, as they caramelize, get really sweet. So I'm not trying to fully cook them. You'll notice there's a lot of those little brown chunks in there from Sarah whenever she whenever she cooked her stuff. I was only doing that because when I think for it's hard to hear. Oh, okay. Um, so I got this kind of cooking. I've got several garlic cloves. This is about three, three and a half garlic cloves, something like this. I've got the mini, the mini garlicky thingy, which is the garlic twist. Mimo got us this. This thing works amazing. You drop your garlic cloves in, give it a few twists around like so, and then whenever you do that, like that, you end up with your garlic all chopped up. So it works really good. Now, don't add your garlic until your onions are where you want them. These onions are starting to get opaque. They're really thinly sliced, so they're gonna cook really quick. So they're almost where I want it. This on the top here, I'm not really worrying about it. I'm just trying to get some of that off there, so I'll have it. Can you check that pasta real quick? Yep. Where's my little red brush on it? Might be over here. Let me check the pasta. Here it is, honey. Okay. So this, this sauce is going to really come together quick. Now, before we get into this, because you're going to see how fast this goes, I've got this mug, and I'm going to pour in a little bit of half and half, about a teaspoon or two, just in the bottom of that, along with that dog hair. Oh, yuck. Prudy. I the, didn't pour the dog hair in there. It was just in there. Prudy, the gift that keeps giving. All right. So, I've got somewhere some cornstarch. Go ahead and do this step first before you put your stuff in there. Before you put your heavy cream or your half and half. I'm going to put in about what would be, say, two heaping teaspoons. Mix this up really good. For everyone out there who's ever made gravy or a sauce and had lumps in it, that's because you didn't spend this time right here and you tossed it in that hot pan and it instantly lumps right up. So I've mixed that up and I've got this, just like that, basically like a thick kind of milk. Okay, here's how fast it's gonna to come together. Your pasta's probably done too, by the way. I'm gonna go ahead and add all my garlic, and this is gonna really rock and roll from this point on. Can we drain the pasta real quick before you go? Okay, yeah, right. let me drain it. Drain this pasta here real fast. And we're rinsing that pasta because this is gluten-free pasta. And if you don't stop the cooking process on it, it just overcooks really easily. It'll just turn a mush. 
So if you're cooking normal pasta, you don't necessarily need to rinse it in cold water. Um, actually, most people I know would advise against it because it kind of locks the pasta down and it doesn't absorb the sauce as easily. Okay, real key, don't burn your garlic. Yeah. Woo if you do, you're going to end up with burnt garlic flavor and you're not going to be able to get rid of it. So we've got our garlic and our onion. We scraped up all those little brown bits. This is ready, so I've got my half and half. I think I put on there three cups. Adjust this as you want, whether you want more sauce or less sauce. That's going to be two cups, give or take. Pepper. Generous amount of pepper. Probably a teaspoon, because this loves pepper. I'm going to add a little salt. Half a teaspoon. Now, this is on medium heat, and it's going to start slowly coming up to temperature. And now, so, why wouldn't you want to turn the temperature way up? I, if I turn the temperature way up, it's going to curdle, and it's going to separate. The cream separates. So what I'm trying to do is just bring this up. Now, you're going to notice a little trick here in just a minute, and I will turn it up in just a second. But what I want to do is roughly bring it up to temperature nice and slow. Now, I'll tell you something else I'm going to do. Just because this is the way I do it. Flatiron Pepper Company. You've heard us talk about them before. I'm adding a little kick to this bad boy. So what could you use instead? Like crushed red pepper? Yeah. Okay. That's what that is basically just crushed red pepper. But um, you don't have to do that. I like a little kick to the sauce. Sarah doesn't mind it. The kids, they yell and scream, but whatever. <laughs> they're, kids. they're not cooking. <laughs> yeah, they don't have any choice but to eat. Uh, uh. <laughs> Um, and that's so, how we do it in our household, right. by the way. <laughs> so, when this starts to heat up, which is there, it's already getting hot. I'm going to turn the temperature up to about medium high. I want this to, whew, that added a little bit of kick. Boys and girls, if you get that flat iron pepper company, I'm telling you, that stuff adds the flavor and it throws a little heat in there, too. So, I want this to come up to a nice, you can already see the steam. See the steam on it, huh? Yep. I'm going to get a big whisk. We're getting to the real tips of making homemade afraid of right here. Bring this up slowly, but once it starts to get up to temperature and it's hot on your finger when you touch it, you want to go ahead and turn the heat up on a little bit. That way it's going to come to a boil. I've got my little thing here that I made with the cream and the cornstarch, and as soon as I start to see this thing simmering, I'm going to add this really slowly. Turn that heat up just a hair more. Now you start to see those bubbles along the side. Can you see those? Mm. See them right in there? This doesn't take much. You gotta be really careful if you're using a small skillet with this because you'll just spill it out everywhere and it's boiling hot right now. So Now let's just kind of keep stirring this to keep it from wanting to separate on us. See the steam coming off of mm -hmm, it? I see that. Now you'll start to see there are some bubbles forming right along the sides right there. Okay, yeah, that I see that. That tells you that this is getting ready to start rocking and rolling. This is where you really have to babysit it. And really what you want to do is you want to get this to a point, get your pasta put in your bowl, get your chicken put on it, and have this ready to go. Because when this is good, it's good. When it's not good, it's not good. So get this up here pretty good. Keep giving it a little stir. You see all the steam coming off of it? You just want to see some little bubbles on this. When it's getting ready to start. It's already starting. I can see them along the side. Yep, once, I see it. Okay, now, once you start seeing see. them pop up. See right there. Yeah, right see right, right over there. there. Once yep. you start seeing them pop up out in here, this edge is your skillet being hot out in here. It's telling you that the internal temperature of this is getting where you want it. Okay, so I'm going to start slowly adding my thickener. And notice I'm doing this with a whisk. I could be doing it with that spoon, but it's going to be really hard to keep everything mixed up. And so again, you'll end up with lumps in the middle of it because you didn't get it mixed up quick enough. And that heat instantly sets up this cornstarch. Now, you don't want to get this super, super thick because then you go over here and you're messing with your pasta and you're putting your chicken over the top. And the next thing you know, this sets up into like a biscuit. <laughs> I mean, this sets up into like concrete and you can't get it out of the skillet. So don't worry about getting it too, too thick. Once it comes to a boil, you'll see how thick it's going to be. That's still a little bit thin. It's 
back to simmering really good, so I'm gonna slowly add a little more. Add it in the center, right where you're stirring. Oh yeah. Now you start to see it thickening. Yeah, it's thickening now. Really oh yeah, yum. Okay, now, last thing I need to do really quickly is I got my Parmesan here. I wanna add, give or take a half a cup of Parmesan. Okay, I'm gonna come back out Don't here. cheat on your Parmesan. Use the Parmesan. This is a dish that loves Parmesan. It needs a lot of Parmesan. All right, so, turn the heat off. That way you can kind of stop that cooking. Pick this up off the heat. If it starts to get too thick for you, pick it right up off the heat. Continue stirring the whole time. That's only like four or five ingredients. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I got my onions in there. got my garlic in there. got my stuff. This is starting to see how I pulled this off while it was still thin because it's continuing to thicken as it sets in the skillet and it gets hotter. So Sarah's got her pasta. She's got her chicken. Now, can you get the camera and get like a really close up and I'll do like some 1970s. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. <laughs> We need slow mo. Yeah. We need to figure out Facebook Live slow mo. So you just pour that over the top like so. Now, you need a fork. You also have your ranch dressing that you made up just a minute ago that's been in the fridge. It'll go deliciously over the salad. Look at this meal that we just threw together in exactly 30 minutes. I've been saying forever, 30 minutes. We just threw this together Okay. In exactly 30 minutes. Let me make sure that this is okay for all the people at home. No one gets okay. sick. Make sure you're not going to burn your mouth, honey. Mm. <laughs> oh, boy, that, I'll tell you what. That... Fire Company, what's that called? Flat Iron. Flat Iron Pepper Company. Ooh, I added some kick to this, and this is absolutely off the charts. Half hour, you can have this on the on the table for you and your kids with a salad. I was gonna say with a salad. Your, with a salad. Here's so, your. So it's not overly hot. It's over. Oh, I caught that. Um, we'll be back next week. I don't know if we can top this or not. We'll try. We need to do a kitty show down the road somewhere with like some really sweet tenders and stuff. Anyway, thoughts on that. Homemade ranch, homemade chicken Alfredo. Fantastic 30 minutes. Yeah. That is really good. <laughs> Sunday, 3 o'clock. That's good. That's really good. I'll have another bite where you turn okay. that off. It needs a little bit more salt. That's it. A little salt. 